This year's Australian Open was an absolutely unforgettable one. It's personally my favorite tournament because it's the one that first got me into tennis. So every year I try to catch most of the matches even though the primetime matches play in the middle of the night over here. But this year's Aussie Open was definitely a must watch because of all of the incredible upsets. And especially the championship matchups both on the men's side with Roger and Rafa and the women's side between the Williams sisters. But let's begin with the unseeded upset starting with Mishka Zverev who made it all the way to the quarterfinals best in his career. First defeating the big American and 19 seed John Isner in an all L 5 set battle. Winning 6-7, 6-7, 6-4, 7-6 and 9-7. And then a huge upset against the world number one and last year's Aussie Open finalist Andy Murray. Beating him 7-5, 5-7, 6-2, 6-4. What a successful tournament for Mishka. Next, I want to give credit to Great Britain's Dan Evans who played some inspiring tennis. Eliminating 7th seed Marin Cilic, 3-6, 7-5, 6-3, 6-3. And then 27th seed Bernard Tomic in straight sets, 7-5, 7-6, 7-6. Andreas Seppi is also worth a mention for winning in comeback fashion against 14th seed and hometown favorite Nick Kyrgio. In a crazy match, 1-6, 6-7, 6-4, 6-2, 10-8. Six, and then in the round of 16 where he managed to force Stan Rawrinka into three tiebreakers. And finally we have Mr. Wildcard Surprise Dennis Istomin. He knocked out world number two and defending Aussie Open champion Novak Djokovic. In an unbelievable match winning 7-6, 5-7, 2-6, 7-6, 6-4. For the full story of the match you can check out my video in the suggested. And then he followed it up by beating 30th seed Pablo Carreño Busta. In another back and forth 5 setter, 6-4, 4-6, 6-4, 4-6, 6-2. Unfortunately, he ran out of gas and then sustained an injury against Grigor Dimitrov in the 4th round. But Denis Istomin really making a name for himself from this tournament. And now for the women's side, we have the dangerous American with lots of swagger, Coco Vanaway. Started out defeating 15th seed Roberto Vinci, 6-1, 7-6. And then the epic upset against the world number 1 and defending Aussie Open champion Angie Kerber. Winning in convincing fashion 6-2, 6-3 where Kerber just couldn't do anything against her. And then she did the same to another champion, the 7th seed Garbine Muguruza, 6-4, 6 love. But then her run ended in the semis falling to another champion, Venus Williams, in 3 sets. But boy, Coco Vandeweghe is going to be a huge threat in future tournaments. Then I thought the Romanian Sorana Cristea is worth mentioning for making the 4th round. And beating 10th seeded Carla Suarez Navarro in the process 7-6, 6-3. And then we have the German qualifier Mona Bartel, also for making the fourth round the best in her career. And beating 29th seed Monica Puig in the process, 6-4, 6-4. And then we have the former UCLA Bruin Jennifer Brady, who too made the round of 16. By getting past the 14th seed Elena Vesmina, 7-6, 6-2 in the third round. And finally, the amazing story of Mariana Lucic Baroni, who fought so hard through her personal life to make it back into tennis training hard to play at a high level again and into the semis at this Australian Open. Her only other semis came in 1999 at Wimbledon. She had an incredible upset in the second round on number 3 Agarod Wanska 6-3, 6-2. Fought past number 5 seed Karolina Pliskova 6-4, 3-6, 6-4 and ended the tournament reaching her highest ranking of 29. So incredibly proud and happy for Mariana. So that set up the classic matchup between Serena and Venus Williams. That was their ninth meeting in a Grand Slam Finals. And first since 2009 in Wimbledon and their first since 2003 in front of the Australian Open crowd. It was so amazing to watch them battle for a championship again. So Serena defeated her older sister for the seventh time in a Grand Slam Finals in a 6-4, 6-4 victory. With that she regained the number one ranking and captured her 23rd Grand Slam singles title. Which now makes her the leader in Grand Slam titles in the Open era passing the great Steffi Graf. But wow, what a champion, what an athlete with lots of class. Plenty of respect for both the Williams sisters. And now finally, on to the men's final between the legends Federer and Nadal. But let's see how we got to this legendary matchup. So like I mentioned, last year's finalists Andy Murray and Novak Djokovic were eliminated by Mishka Zverev and Denis Istomin, respectively. Roger Federer, the 17th seed, had to beat higher seeds. Number 10, Thomas Burdick in straight sets, 6-2, 6-4, 6-4. Number 5 seed, Kei Nishikori, 6-7, 6-4, 6-1, 4-6, and 6-3. Then fellow countryman, number 4 seed, Stan Wawrinka. In the semis match, 7-5, 6-3, 1-6, 4-6, 6-3. -6 Rafael Nadal was the ninth seed. And he had to beat the future star, number 24 seed, Sasha Zverev. 
4664676362, the higher seed Gil Monfils 63634664, and Milos Raonic, who I wanted to win the tournament and had an excellent chance to, but Nadal took care of him 647664. And then the semifinal against the 15th seed Grigor Dimitrov, in 5 sets 6-3, and 6-4. And so that set up the dream matchup that everyone wanted, and that everyone didn't really expect to see again in a Grand Slam final. It was their ninth Grand Slam finals meeting, their first since the 2011 French Open, and boy it was an absolute classic. And not surprising at all, it was another tough back and forth match. But you could tell Federer really wanted it. Not saying that Nadal didn't, but Roger really locked in in that fifth set. And hit so many of his quality backhanders which ended up being too much for Rafa. So Roger took it 6-4, 3-6, 6-1, 3-6, 6-3. That's Roger's 15th major title and 5th Australian Open title. Making him the first male player to win at least 5 titles at 3 Grand Slam tournaments. With 7 at Wimbledon and 5 at the US Open as well. Well everyone, Roger Federer is back. What an amazing, surprising, and unforgettable Australian Open. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you'll tune in to the next episode. If not, I hope to see you tennis fans for the French Open.